It's a Tuesday edition here on Zero Block 30, and today we have five rounds in the magazine. Round number one, we have a big old beef with Joe Biden. We're going to settle that shit once and for all. Round number two, astronauts are back at it again, this time with their little Frenchy boy demands with some, they need some French cuisine while they're in space because all of a sudden astronaut ice cream isn't good enough. Uh, Go to space camp once, you fucking astronaut pussies. How about that? Stop complaining that you need lobster and beef bourguignon and all kinds of shit. You're not Julia Child, you're an astronaut. You used to be a fighter pilot, probably. Grow up. Round number two, or no, as you were. Round number three, damn, that was a very smooth, as you were, my God. Round number three, it's with a heavy heart that we announced that the DOD is back at it again with their weirdo ways of promoting sexual assault prevention. I don't know how they keep doing this shit, man. Like, how do you keep having cake parties and coffee get togethers and all kinds of stuff? It's not a third grade birthday party, is it? No, no, it's certainly a very serious topic. It's a pretty serious topic. Try stop trying to give people snacks. This isn't Sunday school where you get a couple of cheap Oreos and a couple of glasses of Kool-Aid. Round number four, we're going to talk a little bit about jobs whenever you get out. There's a list of six jobs that are the highest paying trade jobs for veterans when they get out of service. We're going to see if cons can guess those. Round number five, the Russians are attacking Lithuania, not with bombs, but with their words. And we'd be remiss if we didn't remind the listener that sticks and stones may break your bones and words, sometimes they hurt even worse. And all that's going to be brought to you by our good friends at 3G. They won't ever hurt you or leave you dismayed like those Russians in the embassy. They're not going to do that to you. They're going to leave you feeling nice and spry and giggly when you're watching any kind of show um, on the old inner tubes. You can uh, relax at night and just sit back and relax and love smoking that and eating cookies. Our guy, Doug's man. Did you see Doug'sy boy after he ate his first THC cookie? Yeah, <laughs> that uh, thing you said about him. Um, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> it's so just polite. The, if you haven't seen it, go to KFC Radio's YouTube. Our guy Doug's is just like the most gentle creature of all time. And he had his first cookie. I believe it was on April 21st, which is three chi day. And he sat back, ate a whole ass THC cookie. And you could tell like this is, you know, when somebody has a complaint that they've been sitting on for a while, when you're just a nice person and you don't want to complain. Like I've been to restaurants Mm -hmm. where people do that. Like um, one of my buddies would never, ever complain to a server at all. And he ordered a steak medium rare and it came out essentially black and blue. And if you go to a nice steakhouse, getting a black and blue steak, fine. Like, that's fine. But if you're at like the middle of a road spot, like uh, like a chain steak restaurant, Black and blue, probably not the way to go there. No, so it came out and he was trying to eat it. And it was just he got like halfway through and he's like, you know, I, I can't do it. And the waiter came back over and he was like, I'm sorry, but I, I've never done this in my life, but I have to send it back. And he showed the guy the thing. He's like, that's not even black and blue. That's just essentially raw. I'm like, I'm sorry that that, that happened. That's what Doug's face looked like whenever he was like, I. I'm just really thirsty, guys. I'm just really thirsty. And if you haven't tried three chi, it will make you thirsty. So have a little bit of water sitting beside your bed, maybe in a, in a Yeti cup that is uh, christened with the four play logo or something like that. Go to three chi.com. You're going to enter the promo code. What's the promo code cons? Do you know off the top of your dome? Cause I closed sure. out the old fucking sure. Email. Do not sure. Do not do not oh, have that sweet. open. <laughs> oh, sweet. Good on me. Oh, here it is. So the promo code actually is ZBT 20 with 21. You're going to get 5% off your order with ZBT 2021. Go to three chi.com. We love it. You must be 21 years old to purchase. Um, it has gummies, it has vapes, it has tinctures, it has all kinds of shit. They're formulated by a biochemist. Check it out, 3chi.com, promo code ZBT2021. Let's get started with the show. You know, you right, so I'm sorry, hold be- on real quickly. Go ahead. You mentioned the, the, the cheap Oreos at the, the church camp. Hydrox, yeah. Yeah, dude, I was in line at the supermarket the other day, and I saw this box of cookies. They're Oreos, they're not Hydrox. They're tuxedos. Have you heard of these? Fancy. No, I've never heard of tuxedos. Is that like a dollar store or special? Uh, yeah, I'm showing you guys on the screen right now. It's I gotta, just, I gotta say that looks better than Oreo. It looks better than Hydrox yeah. too. And that fancy name, tuxedo. Come on. Did Those you buy them? Those right there, prime. Like I occasionally back in the day. Well, this is really like an Iraq special. Like what the two snacks that I used to love to eat, so I wouldn't have to go to the chow hall that much. 
We, I don't know. Did you guys get enormous shipments of Girl Scout cookies? Yes. So yes. Girl Scout cookies were everywhere and it was a legitimate lifesaver. Like you walk in and there's a fresh shipment of Girl Scout cookies. You were like, oh, hell yeah. So this one, it was the Tagalongs. That's the one with the peanut butter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Tagalongs, I would take Tagalongs and a thing of like uh, just regular creamy peanut butter and give it extra peanut butter. Like use mm. it like nachos with the peanut like butter there. Peanut butter infused mm -hmm. tag -alongs. I had that, but if we ran out of Girl Scout cookies, I would go with Oreos. Those ones, the tuxedos look like they have perfect ridges for like getting the peanut butter, just the right amount. Yeah, that's true. You know mm -hmm. who else really liked um, um, Oreos and, and, and peanut butter? Who? Um, Haley and uh, I'm blanking on the other girl's name. Haley and shit the girls from the parent trap oh Lindsay lohan yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. that's a great movie it it's is. shocking that Lindsay lohan didn't end up in superstardom and also shout out to Lindsay lohan i was talking about nip slips last night on twitter and she was like the original perfecter of just this subtle tasteful nip slip mm. yes <laughs> she was she was uh quite the connoisseur of those she was. I had a fantastic weekend. I'm back full out into the old barbecue game. I was cooking it up this weekend. It was lovely here. It was like 92 degrees on Saturday and Sunday. Not a cloud in the sky. My new spot has like a beautiful breeze that rolls through. We were spending the day at the at the pool. It was awesome, man. Like it's it's nice to be have some place that's hot as shit, but you could also swim. It was fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that I would ever call 92 comfortable, but I guess it's better than 102. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be dipping my toes in here pretty soon. I sent you guys a little screenshot of the weather. 95 is on the forecast already. 97. Soon it's going to be over 100 every damn day, and that's not going to be enjoyable at all. I cannot. But that being said, I've been hooking up with these dudes. Not no, I said that weird. I've been oh. hanging out with these <laughs> fellas from Chud's Barbecue, and they've been showing me all these different beef recipes, and it got me thinking. Beef was big time in the news this weekend with people, I guess, just extrapolating what happened with Joe Biden. Did you see all those memes that were coming out about meat and shit, cons? No, actually, I didn't. I really, I you know, it was off my phone a lot this weekend. Okay, so I'll it. break it down. Round number one, this is a story that is from old Joe Biden. Joe Biden, he went on and he was talking about like global warming and shit like that. So on April 22nd, and this one comes from Snopes. So on April 22nd, the US President Joe Biden gave remarks at the Virtual Leaders Summit on Climate in which he framed a, na a, nas a nationwide effort to curb greenhouse emissions as an opportunity for millions of good paying middle-class union jobs by investing in new jobs. Biden said he hopes that the United States can have its greenhouses cut in half by 2030. The United States isn't waiting, Biden said. We are resolved to take action not only in our federal government, but in our cities and states all across the country, small businesses, large businesses, large corporations, the American worker in every field. I see an opportunity to create millions of good-paying middle-class union jobs. I see line workers laying thousands of miles of transmission lines for clean, modern, resilient grid. I see workers capping hundreds of thousands of abandoned oil and gas well that needs to be cleaned up and in abandoned coal mines that need to be reclaimed, putting a stop to the methane leaks and protecting the health of our communities. And he just goes on and on about what they're going to do and adding all these jobs. And driving around San Antonio and Texas in general, the way that the like the energy sector can adapt and come up with new shit, it really is remarkable, man. Like mm -hmm. remarkable. Yeah, and I'm sure you see it a lot more than I do around where I live, just because there's the, the space to do it. Well, they have now here in San Antonio, I can only really speak to here because this is what I've seen lately. Any of these farms that are like in danger of going under, because I mean, let's be honest, like the farming industry is struggling without mm -hmm. like subsidizing it from the federal government. There's been a lot of struggle there. So having these farms that are starting to go, like the land isn't really useful for what they had been using it, even for generations. The city of San Antonio has been buying these farms from these farmers and turning it into like solar farms. Mm -hmm. So you could drive down the road and it'll be what used to be potato fields or whatever. And it's just covered in energy grids. Like the people that pay get paid to put those in, you imagine they're getting paid pretty damn good. Like that's yeah. a good industry to be in. Yeah, certainly. Anything like that that is just not as, no, just not as prevalent right now. It, it just seems like there's a lot more 
uh, opportunity to be lucrative. Yeah, I agree. And that, and so that's kind of what Biden was talking about, like that you can do the same things that you had done and we just need to find a newer way to do it, which is, I mean, that's basically what we've done forever. If we would have just sat on train technology, old Ford wouldn't be making billions of dollars. Like, that's a good people point. Like, well, we have this, we have trains. There's really no reason for cars. Like, that's we don't a have good to, point. Yeah, if we had just rested. destroy the train industry. Well, we have planes and shit now too. Like you could get better and adapt. Yeah. America has never been one to, to rest on our, our laurels. So that's interesting. I never even give thought to that, that they were like, oh, horses, they, you know, they get us from A to B. Why do we need trains? Well, why do we need cars? We have trains. Oh, that's a good point. But then it begs the question, where does that, where does that stop? Or does it ever stop? Well, that's stop what the, the Daily cars. Mail, the Daily Mail took this speech from, because Biden said that there are certain things that we can reduce by 90%. So the Daily Mail ran with that, which I love it. It's kind of like a Barstool Sports kind of take. Like you put it out there, somebody says something, you're like, oh, well, let me give the smallest example possible to make sure that this argument looks dumb as hell. So the Daily Mail took this and said that if everybody cuts down on what they're eating beef wise, because beef is supposedly like really bad for the environment too, even though a lot of that's been kind of debunked. So you have, <laughs> They're saying if you take that and you reduce it by 90%, the average American should only eat four pounds of beef. Buddy, you come down to Texas, most folks are eating four pounds of beef in a weekend. Like that's a weekend. That's yeah. not a year. You're not going to have that going on. But all because the Daily Mail said that, now all these politicians are quoting it like it's fact. Like Biden was basically said, listen, if you eat more than four pounds of beef, you're going to the gulag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and there are a lot of parts of this country where, like you said, if that's such a basis for food uh, in terms of their meals and, and not so much up here. I feel like up here in the Northeast, it's it's I don't want to say it's so health conscious because I, I don't see anything wrong with red meat, but people are more into other stuff. And like now the, the big thing is becoming the meat substitute, the impossible meats. Of Fuck the world. that, man. Mm -hmm. no. Fuck all of that. Fuck all like of that. If you have all, hey, there's it no way good. that stuff is healthy. It tastes right? good. Well, I don't know if it's healthier. It tastes, it, it, it tastes fine. Be. Like if you go and you get a hamburger and it's like one of those morning star burgers or whatever, and you look at what the ingredients are, it looks like you're looking at the back of a shampoo bottle. Like it's <laughs> not, like that shit's not natural. And no, then no. if you get a beef one, it's like, what are the ingredients here? It, well, it's beef. Like that <laughs> is the ingredients. That's like yeah. the Ron Swanson thing on uh, Parks and Rex where Chris Traeger was trying to have um, the competition where he made like a turkey burger and all this fancy shit. And then Ron Swanson just takes a slab of like 89% beef and grills it up and doesn't put any condiments on it. And they're like, oh yeah, this is better. This is better than what you just had. Yeah, because turkey <laughs> burgers stink out loud. They're terrible. And then, and, then he, and then Chip ate some of it and he was like, oh my God, you're right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, freshly exactly purchased right. from what is it what was this store meat and stuff meat and mm -hmm. things so you have all these people that are saying uh, crazy shit now based on this article one of which one of the um, former i think it was um president trump's financial advisor or something like that he said next thing you know biden's gonna start making us drink vegetarian beer uh what beer are you drinking with meat in it pal yeah <laughs> You drinking that that uh, that beef based beer? <laughs> it's like from wheat already, wheat and corn. Like where? What do you mean? Hops? Uh, there's no fucking hops that you're shooting with bow and arrow, like no, running through the old woods. Definitely not. I don't know why, but Biden strikes me as somebody who sits down every night and has a big old T bone with a baked potato and half a stick of butter. And despite the fact that you know Dr. Biden's telling him, Joe, you you got to cut down your cholesterol and this that and the other, and he says. Don't tell me my business, woman. And then he just continues to eat his his meat and potato, and that's that. So it's just you, kind of funny. If you could go out to any style of restaurant with Joe Biden, what kind? What restaurant would you go to? <sighs> Man, you know what? I'd probably go Mexican because I bet you he gets wacky off some marks. Oh, you know, I bet uh, he fucking and the way that he pronounces like a lot like enchiladas. I bet yeah. he, like, he doesn't pronounce anything even remotely close to correctly. I would go with. Imagine old Joe going to hibachi. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you see him like getting the, getting the sake squir uh, squirted in his mouth. <laughs> Having that. I mean, I would just, his face, he would be tickled pink watching that <laughs> onion train go by. 
He brings his own. He brings his own conductor hat for when they push like, the train. Y'all gotta watch. You gotta watch this. Wait, 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 wait till he sees. Wait till. He, wait, wait till he breaks out the onion volcano. You're not gonna see this type of thing at Taco Tuesday. Watch him. Watch him. What he does with this egg. He's gonna flip this thing up and it's gonna catch on the side of the spatula. I told you he caught it on the side of the spatula. Unbelievable. He did it again. Throw me a shrimp. <laughs> Throw me a shrimp. There is no greater feeling at a restaurant than when you're sitting at a hibachi table. And the guy throws the shrimp in the air uh-huh. and you snap, not even where it like hits your tooth, but it just straight down the old pipe. Yep. You, you feel like Jordan. Mm-hmm. It, it feels like that moment when uh, Dwayne Wade tosses up the ball yes. to LeBron James and he comes in and dunks it. You feel like that's your restaurant LeBron James moment when you catch that in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Choking, choking on that flip shrimp would be a top five way to die. Oh, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like he went out doing what he loved. But you got to get up. Because you want people to remember you being the shrimp guy, not the guy who choked. So if you start choking, you got to beeline to the bathroom. You got to get rid of any type of Heimlich maneuver possibility at all. You got to go out on top because you don't want to be sitting there choking. That shit's embarrassing. Oh, Have you ever so choked bad. in a restaurant where you needed the Heimlich? No, I can't imagine. That's very fun. Oh, I did. At oh, the really? Golden Corral in Jacksonville, Florida, I did of it. Of all when, places. Yeah, they used to have... <laughs> Uh, Warther's Originals, like you could pick from at the end of it, you could have Warther's Originals or you could have Peppermint. The Warther Original, people don't talk about the choking hazard because that bad boy is so slippery when it Mm. comes out of the package. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to get lubed up or anything. As soon as it hits your tongue, (laughs) if you laugh or anything, it'll be in the back. I put that sucker in after I probably dominated like a dozen rolls and then it hit my tongue, went straight into the old windpipe, Luckily, my dad was there, gave me the Heimlich maneuver. I shot that where there's original across the room. Yeah, that's that's got to be an all time feeling, though. If you save someone with the Heimlich, especially your child, dude. Yes. Like, oh, shit. Child. I had to no, do but- it with McCartney. McCartney really? had a hard candy chilling in like just a, a lollipop, like the little dum dums. McCartney was probably three years old and the dum dum head popped off. Fell off, yeah. And I had to stop stop my truck, hop out, get McCartney out of the car seat and get the candy out. My wife was like, you're like a superhero. Like the way that you just sprung into action and you just act immediately. I was like, yeah, well, that's what war does, babe. Like you, you don't have time to be sitting around thinking you got to act. <laughs> but I'm thinking even more so like a, str- like a, <laughs> <laughs> like a stranger. You just see it from across the room and you just react. Because I think most people would just freeze. So that's be that that's probably a greatest a feat. That that's a story you talk about every time you go to a restaurant. Like, hey, did I ever tell you that story about the time I saved someone's life? Yeah, Dad, twelve times. Yep, it's I almost a better. Janitor at UTSA, uh, mouth to mouth. When what? I was, when I was a student. Yep. You're just saving people's lives left and right. Yeah, my Fucking kid, hero. janitor. I don't care who it is. You're getting saved if you're around me, friend. <laughs> Not on Chaps' watch. You're not dying. No, sir. Yeah. No, especially, especially if it comes down to beef. But the beef prices, don't worry, everybody. You're not going to go to jail if you eat more than four pounds of beef. So nobody be nervous about that. But in round number two, people complained about space. We had this one is from, I guess, Paris today or some shit like that. They say that French astronauts who leave Earth these days don't love leaving the French food behind. I got to say, first off, before we get into this, French food, drastically overrated. Now, all right, here's what I'm going to say. I've yet, I've yet, no, no, no. I've yet to go to France. So I don't know that I can properly judge it until I have it. No, you live in New York City. You could judge it. It's not the same because I, you know, I had Italian food my whole life. Then I went to Italy and I was like, whoa, all right, this is a little different. So that's fair. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to judge it. I mean, I guess I just, there you have to be in a mood for french food like if i am i got to prepare myself for like two weeks if you're gonna tell me i'm going to eat like a fancy french michelin star restaurant or whatever i gotta know two weeks in in advance so i can look up the menu be like excited about the process of how you cook it you tell me i'm going to get brisket from a barbecue spot i'm ready to go any time of day Mm -hmm. i'm ready Mm -hmm. you just say like hey we're going to go get brisket i'm in but if you're like hey we're going to go eat some escargot you got to let me know. I feel like the other thing, too, if you're telling me we're going to French for dinner tonight, all right, let me know at time. So about an hour, two hours before, I can get a little warm-up snack because I feel like the portions in French cuisine are not that large. 
That's true. And I think if you downed a couple glasses of wine, because mm-hmm. I think like after glass three and a half of like red wine, you you could eat anything. Yes. And it's going to taste delicious. Like you yes. just put it in front of you as not as long as it's not like breakfast food, because breakfast food and wine doesn't go together. But just about anything else, I'll eat the shit out of it after I've had a couple glasses. So the French uh, astronauts, which first of all, unbelievable that there's French astronauts. I had no idea. I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't either. I did not. Think I, I honestly thought it was space. us, China, Russia. I know that they throw in Canada, but I, I think that's just to be polite. Like the Canadians didn't do anything to fucking deserve to go to space. No, not at <laughs> it all. Just happened. They've been they've been riding our coattails for years now. <laughs> yeah, like our one of our cities has more in population than like half your country. Like you don't deserve to go to space. I never thought France went to space either. Apparently, Belgium goes to space. I had no idea. I mean, space waffles, that's got to be fucking fantastic. That's the sun rises. Amazing. Well, I don't know if the sun rises in space, but <laughs> the sun's out and you're eating some Belgian waffles with some nice freshly whipped cream. Come yeah, on. but come on. Think about that, though. That the, the whipped cream and the syrup situation might get a little dicey with zero gravity. Oh, no. I think it's actually perfect because it's thick. Like if you wanted to have something more watery it went like if hot chocolate was your shit you're gonna have to go without that for a while but mm. i think you can make syrup work because this is we're actually going to get into that in this article um one of the the french astronauts who launch on spacex rocket to the international space station on friday will enjoy his six month stay in orbit because guess what he's bringing with him lobster what? beef bourguignon cod with black rice pota- potato cakes with wild mushrooms and almond tarts with caramelized pears you got to be the bell of the ball. You show up with all that. Everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody wants to do tradesies with mm. you when you show up to the space station with all those meals. I mean, if all you've had is Mark Watney's poop potatoes the entire <laughs> time that you're up there and somebody comes up with some beef bourguignon, you're, you could legit do sexual favors. Yeah. For that. Like, be like, I will give you a bite of this lobster in exchange for a blowjob. Mm-hmm. I, that's a big miss. I, I need to know what Mark Watney had for his first meal back on Earth after eating poop potatoes for months yeah, on end. That's a good. I, I would like to know that, too. Um, the French guy said <laughs> the French guy, the astronaut, he said, there's a lot of expectations when you send a Frenchman into space. OK, guy, I'm a terrible cook myself, but it's OK if people are doing it for me. Space cuisine has come a long way since Yuri Gargan, the Soviet space astronaut who in 1961 was the first to reach space. They used to squeeze pureed beef and chocolate sauce from toothpaste like tubes. And the food for John Glenn, who was a fucking Marine, went (laughs) 10 (laughs) months and later became the first American in orbit was not tastier. He swallowed some just straight up applesauce. It was one of the only actual foods that he had was applesauce. Nowadays, astronauts get to share their culinary creations of their countries and the world space agencies showing what life is like in hectic space as astronauts should be able to enjoy a quality meal every now and then. Um, This guy and his crewmates got there and he brought all the fancy food up and they were super stoked about it. One of these new, uh, and for NASA, they're trying to do it too. They're actually trying to do pulled beef brisket macaroni and cheese and popcorn Mm. popcorn seems very dangerous yeah those kernels i'm just thinking you know because everybody knows when you pop popcorn not every kernel gets popped so there's kernels Mm -hmm. that are unpopped all those kernels floating around they fly into some sort of instrument get lodged somewhere that they shouldn't next thing you know we got apollo 13 all over again Yep, exactly right um this guy richard Felipe, a chef and cooking instructor with southwest france heard about this on the radio and he said that he got his culinary classes to cook up all different types of things and see if they can make it work in space. So now these folks at NASA are trying to send it up there and be fancy like France. They're doing quail, tuna and lemon confit and other foods that accompany the French astronauts. They're going to do it too now. So they're going to be able to have that as well and get this. This is the reason why I put this into the sheet. One, the only astronaut moon food that I think everybody knows about is what? Dippin' Dots. The ice cream, right? Yeah. Like the, the strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate ice cream that they have at the little bars of the museum. Mm-hmm. Listen to this shit. The astronaut at the space station do eat ice cream on occasion. There are freezers on both the spacecraft taking up cargo on the space station at space itself. But 
it was never ever the real the ice cream that you get there with real ice cream available there's no need for space for these blocks of chalky neapolitan ice cream that uh, that parents buy for their children at museums in fact in the 60 years of space age no astronaut has ever even eaten that in space i've been lied to my entire life this is terrible this is honest to god the adult equivalent of santa claus like what? that would have been if you you poll 90 i bet 95 percent of americans if you said what's the most popular thing consumed in space mm -hmm. i would bet it would be that ice cream and then the fact that they never had it that's egregious that's 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 not what you want your country to be telling you because even when you go down to florida the cape canaveral and they say hey eat what the astronauts are eating you should get There's a nothing. refund yeah because that's the only reason why you would buy that. The only reason why. Or Tang. I bet they didn't even tang drink too, Tang yeah. now. Wow. This is if they didn't drink Tang, I'm going to be furious. Yeah, because I drank that and it was horrible. You know, I'll tell you what. You know who this helps? All the conspiracy theorists out there that say we never actually landed on the moon and we just did that shit in some television studio. Now you're going to tell me that NASA's been lying to me about the Dippin' Dots this whole... Well, what else have they been lying about? And I've, I've been a champion of, we have absolutely landed on the moon. We've put man on the moon, but now NASA, you're not helping my argument here. You just made our thumbnail for this week's episode. I, I mean, it really is shocking that you didn't have that ice cream. And the fact that I do, however, like the fact that the engineers, they have like these cold pockets in the spacecraft where it just lets the coldness of space in. I love the fact that they use that as an opportunity just to store ice cream spots like that's mm. such like we're going camp and we have a couple other spots what do we need to put in here let's put some popsicles in right here yeah definitely need some popsicles after a long space day what's better than a freeze pop not a whole lot i guarantee you that the only <laughs> thing that it could be better is saving a little bit of money which you can do if you go to govx.com um the gear destination for professional patriots govx membership is available only to american with service related backgrounds like military law enforcement firefighting emergency medical and more there's a huge arsenal of gear and apparel waiting for you from top brands like oakley garmin north face under armor and more the recreational gear professional technical equipment smart watches and backpacks it's there for some badass activity you absolutely live for and govx has the gear for it are you into knives they got knives there too. You can get a good deal on it. All this stuff for a limited time, get 15% or $15 off your first order of $50 or more with a coupon ZBT 15. It's a pretty great thing. Like I didn't know that you had this website that will go in and essentially verify the fact that you were a veteran or police or mm -hmm. firefighter or whatever, and you get money off. It seems foolish not to do it. Yeah. No, you're, you're brain dead if you don't take advantage. Yeah, so if you want to take advantage, go to govx.com, enter the promo code ZBT15, and you're going to get $15 off your first order of $50 or more. It's a pretty great deal. Make sure you check that out. Let's move into round number three. This one comes to us straight from the source. So the I don't like people that aren't in media or people that don't have to like credit other spots. You might not know this, but the military has like their own website where they publish their PAO stories, they post, they publish videos that they take, and it's open source, like where you don't have to credit it really, you can just take it and use it, it's free use, it's open use. And they put out these kind of press re briefings that is just supposed to be good news and make the service branches look great. Well, they did this with the 28th Expeditionary Combat Aviation Brigade's deployment to the Middle East. They also had a sexual harassment and assault response and prevention team found a way to serve their soldiers. And this is the exact language that this press release has. A small compound here is home to the 28th ECA B chaplain's office, equal opportunity office, and the sexual assault response coordinator. Usually these offices are places of crisis and counseling where soldiers and leaders can come for a consultation and advice during times of duress. But every Tuesday, there is a smell of fresh coffee and snacks and sound of live music, conversation, and laughter. 
The counselors and advocate who run this ad hoc coffee shop call it the Teal Bean Cafe. Teal is the army color representing sharp and has the bean and the gourmet coffee that makes it an unlikely gathering spot for soldiers to come and relax for a while. All coffee, hot tea, and hot chocolate and snacks are free from the soldiers who stop by. They say, we wanted to not only raise awareness about sexual harassment and assault, but to have them in a fun and relaxing environment. What are we doing? What? I mean, what are you, like it's, why? Just why, who is going to be like, you know what? I got sexually assaulted. I want to talk to the chaplain about it, but I'm only going to do it if there's free tea. Yeah, I'm waiting for uh, Tea Tuesdays before I go give my complaint. This is unbelievable. This is, this is a, a clear example of people out thinking the room. And they're thinking, how do we get people in a more comfortable? Well, we make the environment more comfortable. Well, there's ways to do that and make the environment more welcoming without turning it into a party. And, and making it something to where people feel obligated to show up on Tuesdays. This is and just- this sounds like somebody, the way that they word this, it sounds like somebody's gearing up to write themselves on an award oh, citation. Oh, big time. Oh, big time. Uh, started, t- you know, Teal Tuesdays, Teal Bean Tuesdays, Teal Bean Coffee House. They said it was, it's really grown. When we started, it was just a coffee shop, a couple pop tarts and a granola bars. Now we have people in organizations sending us all kinds of snacks and we have live music from the Sandwalk Prophets, the ministry worship team. <laughs> in addition, the Teal Bean has a member uh, free X where soldiers can pick up toiletry, snacks and assorted items at no cost. The items are donated by different organization. There is no chance this isn't going to be listed on somebody's NCOERs or their, like their award citations. I got, I got the sexual assault coffee shop busted up from pop tarts and now we're having toaster strudels <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's just nuts though too because i i think this is great this is something that, that i applaud leadership for doing just in general when you're deployed anything you can do to make your your, your soldiers feel more at home i i support that and and creating this environment but you don't do it under the veil of this is part of the sharp program like the, the, they they need to be two separate entities like create the coffee shop but then, you know, maybe you have the sexual assault uh, and harassment prevention team working on other ways to make people feel comfortable about bringing up any sort of incidents that happen or if they've felt uncomfortable. The mixing of the two here is not exactly kosher, in my opinion. Well, it's and this, this is a very common practice in like the sharp world. I think it's because once you get to high ranking positions like a brigadier general or colonel, you don't have enough people in your ear telling you that idea is fucking stupid yes like you just don't and that's one of the reasons why i think in a lot of these cases if you make the commanding general who makes a terrible decision go testify in front of congress and explain the reasoning behind it you'll have people thinking a lot more about their decisions instead of just some sergeant major sucking this colonel's dick because they thought it was a good idea to do it. A prime example in the sharp world for this is the scare tactic rooms where it's essentially like those um, murder mystery rooms, but for sexual assault. Have you seen these that they're no. having? No, they are having legitimately like two of the people that we follow, both I think all of us follow lady loves Taft. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelsey is her name. And then you also have, um, Uh, lethality jade they were both talking about it that at their units they have these organizations that they want to have almost scare rooms of sexual assault sexual harassment almost kind of i would guess it would be like the sexual assault version of shoot don't shoot training scenarios yeah and they're requiring people who are in sharp like that do the sharp counseling services or they're like the sharp liaison they're requiring these people to go not realizing or maybe realizing and not giving a fuck that a lot of the people that are in these positions have been sexually assaulted or harassed themselves. And so, so many of them are like, uh, fuck no, I don't want to do that. Like, why would I put myself in that position where I have to feel that way again? What in the hell are we doing? And what do they hope to gain? Like putting people in scenarios where they, they can be trained to, to make the right decision in the future. I don't, it is a tough spot to be in for leadership because I think one, you have to do things outside of the box. If mm-hmm. you do it just a traditional PowerPoint brief, nobody's paying attention. Nobody Correct. cares. Like you're not doing that stuff, but then you can't go all the way to the other end either. And you can't have your training be boring. Like mm-hmm. you're really in, it shouldn't take all kinds of creative ways to say, stop sexually harassing and assaulting your peers. Exactly. That's, that's the point. It shouldn't need to be this, 
this grandiose training that's revolutionary. It's basically comes down to just be a good person and treat others with respect. But and that's then, also not enough. Right. <laughs> like you, that also is not it's the same thing with the racial tensions. Like you can't just say, don't be racist because no one, I, if you even asked David Duke, like the Ku Klux Klan guy, like if you asked him, he would probably say, no, I'm not racist. Yeah. Nobody admits to being racist. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And nobody thinks they're going to, or not, maybe not nobody, but I'm, I'm sure some people who have sexually assaulted others, if you had asked them prior to, they would have said, oh yeah, I would never do that. And right. then next thing you know, very much the Matt Lauer like situation where he's like, mm -hmm. oh no, these are all consenting people. No, they weren't. Yeah. And they told you that they weren't. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good point too. That's a good example, especially because when you get into pl uh, places of power where you then perceive someone to be consenting when in fact they're just scared for their job or for their well being and they're just willing to do whatever you say just to get out of there faster. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to round number four. Let's clean it up a little bit there, military folks, about your fucking sexual assault training. Um, so there is an article that is floating around about the six different jobs that you can have. Um, the, the highest paid skilled trade jobs for veterans separating in 2021. So this is from military.com and it's a Blake Stillwell wrote it. And he said there was a time when those who opted who, for skilled jobs training is instead of a college degree were looked down upon. Somehow Americans began to believe that a four year college degree was the only way forward on a path to economic prosperity. That's big time true. Like you don't have enough. There's plenty of kids who parents know my son, my daughter, my whoever, they are dumb. <laughs> they should not be going to college. Like there's, everybody thinks that everybody needs to go to college and that's just simply not true. No, that's not true. But how, how difficult is that as a parent to just, you know, accept, all right, maybe my kid, like not everyone can be in the, you know, in the 95th percentile of their students. In, but in everybody their thinks their kids are, man. Like yeah. you will never find a kid, a parent who doesn't think that their kid is quote gifted or that they're above their peers or something like that. You honesty among parents is a terrible trait. One of my friends, I gain respect so much for one of my friends. They realize early on that their son, probably not like an academic genius, like mm -hmm. where, not going to go to like Harvard or Yale, not in danger of that at all. And from, I, from like middle school, they said, you'd really need to focus in on math and sciences because we really want you to go into like plumbing because pl they're always going to need a plumber. You're always going to need an electrician. And those jobs get paid really well if you're really good at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially you get into a union, you get protected. Absolutely. And so they started teaching their kid, like, we need to find a trade school, like welding or whatever for you to go into, because that's where your skill set lies. And people don't just take their skill set and make it work for them. Like they, so many people just want to go to college and everybody wants to do a job that involves college education. But in reality, the people who are willing to work hard and put some sweat equity is so much lower than people who are willing to sit in a cubicle all day. So if you have these skills, you're going to make a pretty good little penny. And this article goes for that. So they have, they have put out the six top trade jobs that you can get and what you'll to earn the most money. Do you want to take a guess at what these are cons? All right. I would say something has to do something with it. Um, we need, what? this is very specific jobs. So you can't give like, like industry, like you can't say it. Okay. Uh, any, any job that involves writing code. Um, I don't know what that would These be These are called. trade jobs too. So more physical, okay. not, not technical. Okay. Um, certainly an electrician, I think. Okay. Yep. Uh, shit. What else is there? I've got one. Go, go ahead. Underwater welding. Oh, that one's not on there, but that's good. Yeah, welder. Welder's good. That one's not on the list, but you can make a shit ton of money welding for sure. Uh, do we have plumbers in the military? Plumbers, no, but this is like transitioning out. Plumbers is the number one answer. Good job, cons. We're doing a little really uh, family feud action. Number one? number one answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> there. So we have. <laughs> Plumbers, pipe fitters, and steam fitters. This group of skilled trades installs, repairs, and assembles pipe systems to move liquid and gases in many economic sectors and industry. 
government manufacturing and construction are just a few where they are required. As of May 2020, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics says the median annual wage for plumbers just starting out 58 grand in some areas of the country, the top 10 percent of wage earners for the plumbers can earn up to six figures a year. There you go. Not then, college educated, pulling six figures. Pretty damn good. Damn. Yeah, I think that that more and more is certainly we've seen started to at least the uh, the college bubble. I, I think that's going to burst. It has to with the, the amount of money that is spent on a college education. And then for however many years, if you don't have a parent that can pay for your college education, you got to pay for yourself. The amount of debt that you're in for however many years, it's like the return on investment just doesn't make sense. So that I think that and bubble's I can see burst. it if like that return on investment, if you went to, let's say like MIT or Cal Polytechnical, like if you went to one of the main engineering technical schools and you mm-hmm. got a degree from there, that's a huge like step in don't yes. get in anywhere. Like if you want to work in that industry, you have a degree from there, you could do it. But if you're not going to go to like MIT or one of the high, high end schools, there's no way you could justify the difference of paying 30 grand a year versus 12 at a state school. No way. Yeah. It's just, it's just a name. It's just a diploma. A lot of times is, is a foot in the door and, and some sort of network. But uh, I, I think I mentioned it before, but I watched on that, that college documentary, the one gentleman who was in admission said, you can more or less get a very good education at at any one of the 3000 plus colleges in this Mm -hmm. country. If you, if you so want to, I mean, Um, look at Barstool, for example, everybody's essentially doing the same job and you have folks that went to Harvard. You have folks that went to UNC. I went to UTSA, you have Fordham, like basically all the schools, any type of school, a shitty state school or a great private school everywhere in between. And everybody's doing the same exact job. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a good example. Certainly. Um, some people, huh, no, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Say I, I agree with you. Say no, it. I was just going to say like, I'll use rigs as, as an example. When you look at you, you look at foreplay and you look what he's built. I have to imagine some of the things he's learned at Harvard were aided in him and in, in, in making like that how to make golf buddies. Yes. It's like, yeah, but hey, that's that's one of the things you learn at Harvard. I think they have a class for that. Like week one. Yeah. I wish it was Harvard Riggs and he would have done like let's say a bowling podcast with Carl. Like let's see how how good your Harvard education does there when you're not taking one of the rich boy sports. Out yeah. There. The second one, elevator mechanics. I would have never oh, thought that I would have been a top that. one. No, I would not have guessed that. But when now I think to New York City and all of the commercial spaces and all the buildings in general, basically anywhere you go, actually in the country, there's buildings with elevators. So that makes unless a lot you're of in sense. Montana, they only have two. That's crazy. There's only two buildings with an elevator in all of Montana. That's or a maybe wild it's escalators. Stat. It's escalator. Yeah, I think it's escalator. It's escalator because I remember Even- that because there was something about India a while back that these kids would take long field trips like hours out of the way to just ride the one escalator in India at a mall. And it was just, it was just beautiful. It was like watching these kids at Dollywood on roller coasters going up and down an escalator. So the pipe, the pipe fitters, their average income, 58 grand, the elevator mechanics, their median income, 88 grand is where they, they come in. That's impressive. But you have to imagine if you're an elevator mechanic, you're living in a city that's bigger. So you're, you're probably going to have a lo- like a higher threshold at the beginning anyways, because mm-hmm. the cost of living is going to be greater in those cities. Yeah. Next one, power line technicians. That mm-hmm. median income is 68 grand. Pretty damn good. Uh, power line installers and repairs with high voltage. That's a dangerous job. Next one, this one, I think if you're going to go in the military with the perspective of getting a job after and using your skills, airplane mechanic is a no brainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you can walk in, if you're an airplane mechanic, go to any airport and be like, hey, I have military training and aircraft maintenance. I would bet you get the job like right away. Yeah, Uh, obviously there's so many planes. And then I bet you that's pretty lucrative working for a a smaller private airline, Uh, you know, like like these net jets or marquee jets. That's got to be pretty lucrative. Now, what if you were that airplane mechanic and like enlisted airplane mechanic and then when you got out, you used your GI Bill to become a small craft pilot where you could be a one-stop shop for one, one rich person. We're like, look, not only am I going to fly you everywhere and be your pilot, but I'll also be your personal mechanic. I know how to do it all. 
So I'm saving you money. I'm paying an additional person. Yeah, that's that's the dream right there. Because then you get to go to a lot of cool places too. Because you've got to just wait around for the guy when he's ready to go home. So I'm not. Sure. I doubt he makes you just sit in a plane for days on end. So you probably get to go explore wherever it is he has to go. Dude, did you know that certain like I was hanging out with somebody that used to be like the commanding officer of an air station, a Marine Corps air station, where they had like helicopters and shit. They have so many hours that they're supposed to fly and they could take government helicopters and go places just for like training. This dude used to set up his flights where he would go from San Diego up to Oakland area to go. He was a Raiders fan and would go to the Raiders games, like park the helicopter at like a small airfield up there, fly up there on the weekend, go to the Raiders game, get back in the helicopter and fly back the next morning. And that would be his training flights. That's amazing. That's awesome. amazing. I guess the like only using the government for your own personal good and not doing anything wrong because you have to get those training flights in and it has to be approved by somebody so that they know what you're doing and who cares what you're doing whenever you're off and you're not going during the work week so you could be back to do your commander officer shit. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess the only drawback is you can't have a few beers at the game, but that's not that. Well, big if of you're a going deal. back the next morning. Oh, true. If you're going the next morning, then you absolutely can. Because you can only fly so many hours. So if you right. had like your four or five hour flight up there, you got to take your break overnight and then you fly back the next morning. Not a bad gig. And wow. you'll get the government rate on your hotel room. Wow. <laughs> wow. There are ways around everything. And that seems to be a good way to figure out how to beat that traffic in and out of Raider games. Yep. The fifth job, Boilermaker. I had no idea that that was still a thing. I didn't know that that was a thing at all. What does a boilermaker even do? Make boilers? A boilermaker, thank you for asking, is a skilled job assembling, installing, and maintaining boilers, vats, and other containers for liquid and gases. Um, so I guess they just basically do, like, boiler shit. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what it says. Uh, that makes sense. I, I, it just It's interesting to me that I just – I don't really give thought because this is, like, so far outside my world. Right. That I don't give thought that – obviously, somebody has to make the boilers. I just never even thought about who was that person doing that. It's, it's bizarre that there's so many jobs out there that you think are like just wildly unique, mm -hmm. but somebody has to do it in every single city, every yeah, single city. Somebody has to do this. Kind there's of not like three guys who just fly around the country and make boilers. There's a lot of boiler makers <laughs> yeah, out there. You got to call them up and be like, Hey, uh, we, we got some shit going on with your boiler. Like, well, you and a lot of other people, buddy, get in mm -hmm. line, get take, in a, line. Take, a <laughs> take a number. number. <laughs> I'm eight number. months out. <laughs> and the last of the rich people jobs, if you're going to be in trailed, would be a geological and petroleum technician. These skilled tradespeople assist their scientists, computer parts, our counterparts, and exploring areas for natural resources. They also build and maintain, repair the equipment and machinery used to extract those sources. I know a ton of dudes who got out of the Marine Corps and went into the oil fields because they are not averse to danger. And mm -hmm. one of them, this dude did two tours to Iraq, one tour to Afghanistan as a bomb dog handler, came back completely fine, never got injured, was out in the oil fields for like two months, lost his leg. Oof, that sucks. Like one of the, you, have you seen those videos where you're like the people on the oil rigs are like working these huge chains, like they're fucking dental string and just yeah. tossing them around. Yeah. Well, Incredible. one of them went down, wrapped around this guy's leg and pulled it essentially like a boa constrictor and just completely cut off the circulation. They couldn't get the chain off, and it essentially snapped his knee off above the oh, above man. the kneecap, like oh, his leg gosh. off above the kneecap. By the time he got to the hospital, he said that it was just like hanging on by like tattered shreds of skin. That is not what I wanted to hear to end this round. So you're gonna make 56 median a year, but you might walk away without a leg. Oh, I guess no, walk away. You yeah, very bad. Yeah, get rolled away. Oh man, that one. <laughs> maybe we should move on. Yeah, <laughs> but that video was incredible. That one that was going viral for a while. That was just, I mean, it was just work sex. It was, oh, yeah, those cool. dudes are fucking. Hot. You watch somebody do that, even if you don't have like um, a natural propensity to want to suck dick. Mm -hmm. I think when that dude was out there swinging those chains, you change your mind. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to round number five. This one is about sucking dick too, um, but it's about the Russians. The official Twitter account of the Russian embassy in Belarus today took a swipe at the Lithuanian foreign affairs minister, 
Um, his name is Gabriel Lucis Grandis Burgess uh, with a penis jo joke after he expressed solidarity with the, with the Czechs and expelled two employees of the embassy from Russia. Um, the Russian embassy said that the tweet was in response to the tweet in which he extended his support to the European countries and announced the expulsion of two Russian diplomats. Everybody is kicking Russians out of their country. And I don't yeah. blame you. You're Russian. Get the fuck out of here. I think people are starting to really realize, and I don't know, maybe uh, Putin listens to this podcast. Maybe he doesn't. But uh, the old adage that they're the, the big bad guy on the block, I think that's being dispelled more and more. Well, we had that with, we talked about that with Kinzinger one time where he was talking about how you have kind of like elite units in Russia who are very capable at combat, like where they are legitimately very good. But then the drop off from like their special forces to everybody else yeah. is so extreme that they wouldn't pose a threat at all to America. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with China, like everybody's touting China's Navy. Sure, they have like two or three ships that are amazing. The rest of them, they can barely get them to float. Like they're still mm -hmm. not there. They'll probably get there. Don't get me wrong. I think China would definitely get there with the amount of money that they're pouring into it. But they still don't even pour in close to like a quarter of what America does. Right. But I think that they've just coasted so long on a reputation that that that's just the understanding and the appreciation around the rest of the world that it, they're going to do something horrible and they have the capability. But if you just pull back the onion a little bit, you see that, yeah, they're not that bad. Here's the thing. I think we go to war with Russia. I think we win 10 out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. However, you take Russian dudes our military dudes and you line them up in like a UFC style fighting competition and it's one versus one, just fisticuffs. I bet they walk out the victor probably 80% of the time. Why do you think that? I mean, you live in Russia. You could take a punch to the face. I have no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, you're taking the proverbial punch to the face basically every day waking up in Russia. The right. alarm, like the alarm so clock's cold. just a right cross. <laughs> you essentially get breastfed with vodka there. Like there, there, I would say you might have half of the American military, maybe 40%, who's never been in a fist fight in their life. Yeah, but probably we'll talk like they have. You won't find, I guarantee you won't find many Russians who haven't been in at least one fist fight. Probably, probably. What do you think the percentage of guys in our military is that wear all the UFC gear, talk about UFC incessantly that have never actually squared up and punched somebody 90 percent. i would say almost <laughs> all i would say a huge portion of it i mean you do have like combatives and things like that in all of the different branches now where yeah. you have to do some sort of like hand-to-hand -hand combat type of training but it's still not anywhere near what you would need and that used to drive me bananas like hearing some dude that's like a tan belt and marine corps martial arts talk about jujitsu like he knows about it like mm -hmm. you, you don't know like dude you <laughs> do a rear fucking hand punch and you know how to do a rear naked choke that's about it yeah you could do a hip toss and whenever you do it you land wrong so you're out of breath mm -hmm. they do basic combatives and all of a sudden they're ready to talk like they're joe rogan commentating right. on fights eh. i i've always said you walk onto a battlefield with a group of marines you're probably fucked <laughs> you walk into a bar fight with a couple good fighters against a bunch of Marines, you'll probably do okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. I think that's fair. Um, yeah. So the Russians here, <laughs> what actually happened here, and the Russians people, they like the folks that are on Russian Twitter, they weren't having it. They weren't very upset. They said it's embarrassing. They said the Russians are being Russians. I admire the honesty in this tweet, but it seems like it's always a dick measuring contest with my motherland of Russia. Why do you think that is? Are we compensating for something? <laughs> uh, they also said that my apologies to everyone from normal countries reading this shit. Some ill-mannered idiots have seized power in my motherland. Don't worry. I didn't vote for them. Oh, well, that makes it better. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up for I us. I mean, just all these people in the Russian embassies, I, I, but I have to be honest, I don't hate that Russia is using Twitter this way. If, <laughs> let's say, for example, we go back to the Trump administration or even the Biden administration, if President Biden or President Trump tweeted at the president of China, Xi, and said, suck my dick. That might be the most retweeted tweet of all time. 
Probably, probably. It would definitely be received differently from the current administration to the past administration based on experience. But well, let's talk about it from the perspective of Iran, for example, Mm -hmm. whenever we killed Soleimani, it whenever Iran started complaining that we killed Soleimani, if Trump would have just been like, go fuck yourself, Iran, suck my (laughs) dick. People would be like, holy shit, that was badass. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Including me. I've been like, man, that was fucking awesome. Right, right. That's somebody I can get behind. Uh, Mm. I appreciate the the blunt response. Or Um, like whenever Pearl Harbor was attacked, if FDR would have took the Twitter and he would have tagged at Emperor Shudo and said, and just did the Joe Bluth, I've made a huge mistake Mm -hmm. if and like you're going to be feeling like this very soon. That's what we should do. We should bring back a series where we just create tweets of past (laughs) military and and just like uh, world history events and how the leaders of prospective uh, respective company uh, countries would have responded via Twitter. I think that could be very funny. Like FDR Mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Japan. We're coming for that ass. Something like that. Two bombs. Yeah. And speaking of something, some old school American badassery, there is a dude, Jack Mandeville, on tw- on Instagram. He posted this. Uh, I guess it's a clip that's getting kind of a little bit of traction because John Wayne has forever been like the picture of yep. American masculinity, right? Yeah, yeah right, right, right. Like he he's always has. on the horse. He's got the fucking Marlboro Red in his mouth. He talks slow with a draw and he's ready to shoot you. Well, Jack Mandeville said one of the most ridiculous notions in the contemporary American culture is that one must serve in the military as a prerequisite to patriotic or masculine titles. It's a wretched mindset. But in 1941, as the United States was thrust into World War II, it was the overwhelming moral duty of every able-bodied man in America to do his part and put on a uniform. And that's what a majority of them did from all walks of life and career fields, except for John Wayne. Of many of his excuses for constantly avoiding service as one of the worst wars in history, he said he couldn't break contract that he had with the studio, even though the list of tenured actors, Hollywood industrial personnel, professional athletes, and musicians who broke their contracts to do their part is long and well-documented. People who were much older and accomplished than him at the time went to war. They did their part, but not old John. No, the epitome of American masculinity is one of the biggest cowards in American history. Fuck John Wayne. You can't argue. With I that. love that. Tick. You can't argue with that. You really can't, man. Like you, ha- you had Teddy fucking ball game strapping himself to a jet and going mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. Teddy ball game did it. You better get your ass out there, John Wayne. And yeah. I'm not one to say that you have to join to be masculine either. And I agree with Jack on that. But in World War Two, it was drastically different what was going on compared to like the Iraq and Afghanistan war. Mm-hmm. You didn't go to World War Two. I mean, you had dudes that felt like they were going to be left out that were lying at the age of 14 so that they could enlist. Yeah. When you hear all those stories about how many dudes forged documents just to get in the mix. Or ladies who legitimately went out like trying to be fucking American Mulan. Like, Mm -hmm. I'll make a man out of you. They were trying to go (laughs) out and do their part. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's, it's high time that we exposed John Wayne for the person that he actually was. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought in 2021, John Wayne would be getting canceled for being a coward? Yeah, well, he was. Yeah. Don't let the movies fool beef, you. But we're attacking John Wayne. I don't know Unbelievable. what this country's coming to. <laughs> Modern America, it'll get you. Yeah, every time. <laughs> right. Let's move into save rounds and alibis. Uh, Grant, we'll start with you. What do you got, pal? Gosh, I got nothing. All right. Cons? Um, yeah, I forgot to mention this last week. You wrote a, a, a blog about uh, snoozing, and mm. you put a screenshot of a tweet that I put out one time about how I have to set multiple alarms. Now I just need to be clear on something that is not because I like to snooze. That is because I'm an extremely heavy sleeper such that I will hit the snooze while I'm sleeping and not even realizing it, or it will turn an alarm off. So if I only have one alarm and I turn it off, I'll go back to sleep and then I won't Uh, wake up. That's a lack of discipline. (laughs) It's just a lack of discipline. All right. I mean, my wife is the, she's gotten better because her natural like body clock has adapted over the years of after having kids for a decade, you just don't sleep in as late anymore, but it used to drive me insane, man. Like I used to have to be at work at, 
I'd have to be at work at five, like whenever we were pulling kennels and pulling dogs and shit yeah. like that. Her alarm, when she didn't have to be anywhere till eight, would start going off before mine did. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. What are we doing? 15, 20 times pushing snooze? <laughs> like you're robbing yourself of two or three hours of sleep. My, no wonder you're tired all the time. My <laughs> wife does point. that shit now. It's I hate that, man. Hate it. It's, I don't believe in the snooze at all. Like if you're going to go, maybe once you might be able to get away with the snooze once but any more than that you're just you're really just fucking yourself over honestly that's a good, no you're right you're absolutely right I, I mean one snooze when there's like a nine minute gap in between when it's going to go off again an extra nine minutes that's a difference maker but anything beyond that yeah you're just you might as well have just set a later alarm yeah i completely agree there. So that's all i got i also agree that rocky boots are the best boots in the business i I was fucking around yesterday and was mm-hmm. going to do this post on ZBT about Rocky boots. Cause they had like a swipe up to do. And I just got this new fire chimney. And instead, like usually when they come from like a, a bigger charcoal brand, they're going to, they're super thin, super lightweight, which is great, but they break. I mean, it's super hot, cold in there. So they, they break down after a while. You got to keep replacing them. Well, this one that I got is like, quarter inch steel solid it's never ever going to break or anything like that and i was like oh look at me in my rocky boots with a steel toe i'll be fine and i was doing it for safety i shit you not two minutes after i posted that video up on zbt that chimney dropped from my new smoker onto my foot and if I, it weighs like 20 pounds, if I wasn't wearing it, the way that it hit was like at the point of the bottom, oh. it would have definitely smashed my big toe for wow. sure. Wow! Thank you, Rocky Boots. <laughs> yeah. And I got it for the low key at 25% off, but you can't do it. Rockyboots.com. No matter what branch of the military you're in, no matter what you do, you can use Rocky Boots. Even if you're a dumbass like me barbecuing on the weekend, you still safety still paramount whenever there's fire. And there's steel. You got to be safe. That's what I always say. Um, all right. Anything else, Cons? No, nah, that's all I got. All right. I don't have much else either. Close on my old house. I was supposed to go to New York this weekend, but the people that are buying the house are like, hey, can we close earlier? We want to get in there. Uh, yeah, you can, because I would have had to pay the yep. mortgage for May if you don't. Mm-hmm. Now I do not have to, which is fantastic. That's important to not have to pay <laughs> the mortgage on the house you just sold. Yeah, I now going back there, it's just like you piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> because I've already been in this house for almost two months. So going back and forth all the time has just been a pain in the ass. Wait, it's been two months. Yeah, I've been here Jeez, almost two months. Where yeah. does time go? What did you do yeah. with the stock tank? The stock tank went to uh, my real estate agent, who's my friend that nice. she has. Uh, um, she has like a, a homestead here in San Antonio. And her kids are absolute wild cards too. They got like ducks and bunnies and all kinds of like farm animals all over the joint at their place. So they're getting that. And she said, it's going to be like part-time kid pool, part-time duck pond, Mm. which is awesome. Yes, that is good. And it's good that you have a normal pool now, so I can stop making fun of you. Yeah. And it was awesome this weekend. I bet. It was lovely having it have to have you guys out here soon yeah uh we'll be back on friday have a good week everybody it's on the retreat